Hi, I'm Tom, W8JI. The purpose of this video is to talk about filament voltage in amplifiers and the way that that affects the life of the filament uh, emission in an amplifier and how you can measure the filament voltage. There have been some things published over the years in various magazines and on the internet about life of uh, the emission life of a uh, tube and how the filament voltage affects the emission life in the tube. But these things are all based mostly on the claim of one person who has extracted sort of what he wanted to extract from IMAX uh, data and not actually presented the true picture of what goes on with the filament uh, voltage and filament emission life in tubes. So some of the incorrect claims or assumptions that we find in these articles are things like 4.8 volts of filament voltage will allow full output in a 3-500Z. That reducing the filament voltage 3% increases tube life 50%. And that would mean that the filament hour emission loss is a dominant or common failure mechanism in amateur service tubes. It also assumes that hams can measure distortion and monitor the filament voltage because that's a requirement of any minimum filament voltage system and that the tube is a viable candidate for a filament management program. All of these uh, conditions have to be met before we can reduce the filament voltage in a tube. All of the information that I'm supplying here in this video either comes from first-hand knowledge of seeing hundreds and hundreds of amplifiers over the years or from IMAX um, actual data including a paper like Extending Transmitter Tube Life, Application Bulletin Number 18, revised September of 2010. All of these papers, uh, as a matter of fact, there are three papers that you can download off of my webpage, uh, ctrengineeringinc.com, in the Shared Files page you'll find uh, uh, filament management and filament life uh, papers that you can read for yourself to be sure that I'm just not pulling this out of, uh, out of a hat someplace. So the IMAC paper gives us uh, four very clear management requirements uh, if we read that paper carefully. The, um, the tubes must have a good bit of excessive emission um, and uh, that means we have a whole lot of filament reserve there and by reducing voltage we're not going to push the tube close to the edge of emission limits because that can shorten life. Um, that we must also have the proper instrumentation including RMS voltage and distortion, output distortion measurement equipment. That the filament voltage must be closely regulated if we're going to reduce it to a minimum value and that the tube must be thoriated tungsten and not a metal oxide cathode type of tube. You never, never, never want to reduce the voltage in an oxide cathode tube. So if we look at all the information that's uh, available in um, papers about uh, filament emission and IMAC papers, um, we'll find that it's probably not even a good idea to to run a uh, filament at at half voltage or some other reduced voltage to um, uh, recondition the filament as we bring up an old tube. That what we really probably want to do is run the filament right at rated voltage. Or if the tube is low on emission from from either from sitting a long time or not being processed right or even worn out we probably want to run the filament for a little while above the rated voltage until we recondition the filament of the tube. And again there are three papers available on this at the files download uh, page of my website and here's the link again to my website where you can download these papers for yourself. So the address is www.ctrengineeringinc.com.
and it's on the download files page. So if we look at the iMac paper, uh, the application bulletin on extending uh, tube life but through a filament management program, we find one of the very early graphs in the in the paper shows that uh, um, whether a tube is a, a poor candidate for life extension, a good candidate for life extension, or an excellent choice for life extension, at least the likelihood of being able to do that with the uh, tube. And if we look at amateur radio tubes like an 811A or a 3-500Z uh, tube and the typical current that we run these uh, tubes at, like an 811 at 175 milliamps of plate current or a 3-500 400 milliamps of plate current, we find that the 811A falls someplace around 0.007 which even at a steady carrier uh, it's a poor candidate for life management and of course if it gets into amplitude modulated uh, uh, type of emissions which single sideband is going to be even lower on the chart than AM uh, what we would find is is that the 811 tube becomes a horrible candidate I mean it's just no chance at all we're going to extend the life of that tube by reducing the uh, filament voltage from the specified operating range of the filament, which is 6.3 volts plus or minus uh, 5%. And the 3500Z is pretty much, it's actually even a little bit worse uh, than the uh, 811. It's 0 .0053, so it falls lower on the chart and uh, it's not going to do very well either in any kind of a filament management program. The life of your tube is more is really not going to be too dependent on you wearing the filament out through you know just depleting the emission in the filament of the tube. That's not what you're going to have fail. If you do have a loss of emission in the tube and don't have a ton of hours on the tube and you've just slap worn the tube out the problem is probably actually the manufacturing of the tube. It's probably not anything that you could do anything about because it's the contamination or something else going on when the tube was manufactured. Another interesting graph in the uh, iMac paper is what happens uh, to tube life uh, as we have uh, different voltages on the tubes. First of all, iMac uh, has a pretty is pretty clear that the tube has to run for a couple hundred hours before you really worry about doing anything with the tube just so that the filament has a chance uh, to age in and this is at or around the rated voltage or maybe a little bit above the rated voltage but it's in a normal operating voltage range of the tube and uh, that's uh, 200 hours before anything even starts and then if we look at the tube and we run the voltage a little bit high, we we see that we have a, um, a lifetime of maybe 3,500 hours in the um, uh, in iMac uh, tubes, and some of the tubes are at least what they're talking about in this graph. And if we run the voltage uh, in range, we wind up with maybe 7,000 hours. So we we did increase the um, life of the tube by doing that. But here's what really is neat. We can't manage the tubes, so we can't push the life way out. We know that's not going to happen because we'll run out of emission in the tubes. So look what happens if you go too low from following some of these instructions by people. If you go too low on the filament voltage and you start drawing more peak emission off the tube than the tube's capable of supplying, you just run the filament of the tube too cold. Look what happens when you run it low. The life of the tube very prematurely uh, will fail. It's worse than running the tube a little bit hot on the filament. So my advice is to run these tubes within the range that the manufacturer specifies, either at the upper limit of what they specify, which is like 5.25 volts in a 3-500Z at the tube pins, down to 5 volts, but don't ever go below the minimum voltage in the tube. As a matter of fact,
I personally don't like to see 3-500s go below 5 volts at the pins of the tube because you run a risk if the line voltage goes low or you run uh, maybe you get a little happy you run a lot of a lot of uh, power on the tube you might go beyond the peak emission limits of the tube and you're going to start to shorten the life of the tube worse than if you just ran the voltage a little bit hot so these filament management programs are really for broadcast tubes where the tube has a lot of air going across the tube and the tube is only operating at a tiny fraction of the amount of power that the tube is capable of producing and hams are just not there we don't run things that way it isn't economical for us to run things that way you know we're not going to find very many amateurs that will buy a uh, a uh, 3-500Z and run the 3-500Z at 100 watts so we pretty much can't use the filament voltage management programs that allow extended life um, we're not going to do the continuing housekeeping program that that requires um, and uh, we run a risk if we don't do that that we're going to either add a lot of distortion and make our amplifiers wide or we're going to shorten the life of the tube so we just probably need to run them right where they say that they should be run. based on my experience over the past 40 years with these uh, amateur radio type tubes that we use um, the failures in thoriated uh, tungsten filament tubes this would be like 811s, 3500s, 572s, 3 1000s, 3 CX 1200s uh, tubes like that that don't have a cathode um, the failures are primarily uh, when they're new from the factory it's gas or contaminants uh, that cause anode to grid uh, cathode flashovers sometimes it's a little uh, whisker off the copper on an external anode tube that extends over and the whisker arcs over to the grid and then when it arcs it clears uh, there's some uh, now that tubes are coming from overseas it's common to find physical defects like pin, pin soldering or even broken elements in brand new tubes uh, we sort through a lot of tubes here and we weed a lot of them out because of um, like broken graphite on anodes little chips or or cracks in it uh, we find uh, grid filament shorts uh, from poor positioning of the filament structure inside the tube and we find uh, loss of emission from internal material defects and of course after several hours of consumer use Sometimes the co most common failure is uh, anode dissipation abuse. It isn't grid current in this type of tube. It's the dissipation in the anode melting the anode. Or we find tube manufacturing defects that cause a loss of emission or physical failures inside the tube where something just um, wasn't made correctly. And also we have inadequate cooling for the operating duty cycle that people use and then that causes a, either a pin or a glass type failure in the tube. Now metal oxide tubes are a little bit different. Uh, metal oxide cathode tubes have indirectly heated cathodes. The, the uh, filament really is just a heater. It does nothing but uh, warm up the cathode and the cathode uh, uh, is the real electron emitter in the uh, tube and when these tubes are new from the factory we find pretty much the same thing about gas or contaminants that cause uh, problems same thing with the little whiskers that sometimes form on the inside of copper anodes and cause a momentary short that will normally clear once you put high voltage on them uh, we find uh, grid to filament shorts and we find sudden loss of emission or low emission from material defects in the tube now it's real real bad on a uh, metal oxide cathode tube to run the filament voltage low that'll poison the tube that'll just ruin the tube quicker than anything so you don't ever want to run the filament voltage low you want to run it right in the manufacturer's specified operating range when you have a metal oxide cathode you can ruin a tube in a heartbeat from excessive grid current or from um, too low of a cathode voltage. It's way worse than running the cathode too hot. And after several hours of consumer use, 
We find grid dissipation abuse as the number one cause of failure. Uh, we find tube manufacturing defects. Uh, we find tubes where the, somebody has run the filament voltage too low, and that can cause a serious uh, life shortening in the metal oxide cathode tube. And we find grossly excessive high voltage or peak cathode current. If you deplete the cathode and remove uh, the electron cloud around the cathode, if you deplete that electron cloud, the tube will just poison itself. And the same thing if you overheat the grid, you'll migrate the grid off the uh, you'll migrate the gold off the control grid and contaminate the tube with the uh, gold that that uh, redeposits inside the tube. But the most common failure that we uh, ever see in uh, glass tubes like 3-500s and um, occasionally on uh, 572Bs that aren't manufactured properly um, we find that the, uh, that the tube uh, has enough gas in it that it just conducts and shorts the anode over to the grid and the filament of the tube. And there isn't any way that you can age this in by applying filament voltage alone to the tube. You can't get rid of the gas in a uh, thoriated tungsten emitter tube unless it's an external anode tube like a 3CX1200 that has the getter actually on a little plate that's on the filament uh, structure of the tube. But on like a 3500 or a 572B, it's actually um, either a deposit on the glass or it's a it's a um, um, a gettering material that is on coated on the anode of the tube. So the anode of the tube has to get hot in order to the getter the tube. We have to be really careful how we measure the filament voltage in a uh, in a tube type amplifier. The, there are a whole lot of resistances that are distributed through the system that affect the voltage at any given point in the system. You just can't take a, a, an RMS meter. You especially can't take a cheap little pocket uh, volt ohm meter that doesn't actually read the true RMS and start poking the thing around in different places like right on the output of the filament transformer and come to some conclusion of what the voltage is at the tube pins. This schematic uh, here is a um, is the actual um, resistances that appear in an AL82 amplifier with a pair of 3-500 tubes. We have a filament transformer that has about uh, 0.015 ohms of uh, ESR in the secondary of the transformer it has a you know a little bit of resistance in the wiring that goes over to a filament choke. The filament choke drop is huge because there's so much wire in it um, that the filament choke has about two tenths of an ohm total uh, because the current goes through it twice. It goes through it out and then back. So it has about uh, two tenths of an ohm uh, resistance. And then we have the a um, uh, little bit of wire up to the socket uh, uh, clips, and then from the socket clips to the pins. So we wind up with uh, quite a bit of voltage drop by the time we get from the transformer secondary over to the tube pins. Now I designed the transformer in the AL82, and I hope that MFJ Ameritron hasn't changed the transformer de design. But uh, uh, the filament transformer in the AL82 is initially designed so that when the 240 volt winding is running on a normal nominal 240 volt line in the USA, that the voltage at the tube pins um, with a warm transformer will be right dead on 5 volts. So it's right in the middle of the tube operating range of the uh, 3-500Z. And you really don't want to lower that voltage any from the 240 volt tap. There's a 220 volt, approximately a 220 volt tap on the original AL82 transformer for the primary. And that's because in some foreign countries or in some rare circumstances in the United States, 
Some people have uh, 220 volt line uh, voltage. Uh, but the normal case and the rated voltage in the uh, USA is 240 volts um, for the uh, input voltage in our uh, 240 volt circuits. And that's the tap you should use on the transformer. And if you use that tap and if nobody has messed around with the transformers and changed how the transformers are wound, you'll get the right voltage on the two pins. Now QST in an article that gave sort of some bad information on filament management because it told people to run the filament voltage too low, which will actually cause a reduced life in the uh, filament of the tube because they're and plus it will cause uh, increased intermodulation uh, uh, splattering on the output of the amplifier showed uh, uh, some pictures and they clipped the meter right to the output side of the to the tube side of the um, uh, filament choke and you can do that with a good true RMS meter but you have to measure the filament voltage when the transformer is hot when it's at full operating temperature and when the amplifier is actually under load because the filament winding in the uh, AL80B is common to all the other windings in the transformer and it moves around a little bit. You'll never notice the, the uh, life difference in this so it's not that big a deal but where you want to start at in the AL80B is with the pin voltage on a cold transformer you want the pin voltage to be about 5.25 volts and um, um, at the tube pins so let's look at how we can actually measure that voltage at the tube pins with the transformer hot and be safe while we're doing it. the method I like to use is to get right on the pins of the tube with like a wire wrap type wire I use a uh, uh, Teflon wire wrap wire but anything else uh, that uh, has reasonably tough insulation on it and it's a very small wire will work and you just wrap the pin with the wire then you bring the wire out of the amplifier case uh, with a some kind of a Teflon sleeve you be careful not to pinch anything or have anything short out and bring that wire outside the case then we can just add a couple um, um, 200, 100, 200, 300 millihenry small uh, RF chokes and a bypass capacitor um, to you know to keep the RF out of the meter and then we measure the voltage with a true RMS meter outside the amplifier. The uh, meter won't draw that much current so it won't load the chokes down or drop any voltage in the, in the uh, wires coming out to the meter so you'll get a real accurate reading of the pin at the pin of the tube plus it allows you to actually run the amplifier under load uh, you can operate the amplifier and see what the filament voltage goes to and not let the filament voltage of the amplifier go below uh, 4.75 volts in the case of a 3500 you probably really want it 4.8 or 4.9 volts under load and not let it go below that because we don't want to splatter increase the IMD and we sure, certainly don't want to shorten the tube life by running too little a voltage on the filament. A tube retailer, uh, most of the people who claim to make tubes are actually tube retailers. They don't really make them, they buy them and resell them. Claim that uh, this AL82 had uh, uh, excessive filament voltage because it's 5.26 volts at the uh, transformer. Well that's actually too low. So it, it was set too low and the voltage on the pins of the tube is around 4.82, 4.84 volts in, in that area and this is without the amplifier under load. So here we have a case where somebody thought that the filament voltage was too high and they reduced the filament voltage and the filament voltage is really too low because they were they were measuring at the transformer and saw a 5.6 so they reduced the voltage uh, down by adding some resistance and the transformer wound up being too low 
which is even worse for the tubes. You have got to measure these voltages in the right spots or you'll get the wrong readings. The correction for this amplifier was to remove the resistance that was added so the filament voltage on this side of the choke uh, increased back to 5.6 volts where it should be which resulted in uh, just a tad over 5 volts at the pins of the tube. Thanks for watching this video and I hope this video helps everyone understand how to measure and what filament voltage we need to set our amplifiers at and uh, uh, we should all come away with this with the understanding that the worst thing in the world is to set the filament voltage too low. Thank you.